There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list and overall market analysis video. So, before we get into anything, we're going to go over the economic calendar real quick. We do have a pretty data stacked week. We actually just had some geopolitical issues come up. Palestine launched a surprise attack on Israel, so there is some stuff overseas going on right now. No idea how that's going to affect the futures, but we do have to keep it in mind. If the US gets involved, we could see some volatility in the markets just from that. So this week for economic data, we do have a couple of Fed speakers on Monday. I wouldn't say this is going to affect the market too much. Tuesday, we do have wholesale inventories. This is always a hit or miss if it's going to affect the market. Wednesday, probably the second most important besides the CPI. This is the producer price index. So we have that core PPI, PPI year over year, core PPI year over year. And then we also have the Fed minutes from the last FOMC meeting. So this can definitely move the market. If anybody missed anything from the last meeting and they see anything different in black and white inside the minutes released by the Fed, we could see some market volatility. The algos will pick up on it and we'll see that pretty much reflecting into price instantly as soon as it drops at 2 p.m. Eastern. Then Thursday, usual initial jobless claims. Then we have the CPI, so consumer price index, core CPI, CPI year over year, and core CPI year over year. This is the big one. This is going to move the market the most. And I'm hoping we get a pretty good print because we are in desperate need of some good data lately. And markets have been very sensitive to data and the Fed is watching very closely. So as long as the Fed is data dependent, we are data dependent. And then Friday, nothing crazy. I would just say the consumer sentiment, probably the most important that day that comes out at 10, 30 minutes after the bell rings. So most importantly, CPI. Second most important, PPI and the minutes, and then maybe wholesale inventories. And that's for the data this week. So maybe a little bit wise to not swing anything into CPI unless you're absolutely sure you want to take that risk because it's totally random and it's a coin toss. And Friday's data with the non-farm payrolls proved that we actually had a hot print come in. We added a lot of jobs and the market still rallied, even though that's usually bad news for inflation. If the labor market is not cooling down, that means inflation might not cool down as well, but we still rallied. So anything can happen with these data sets. It can literally do the opposite. So you have to be careful. And then for seasonality this week, Season X was actually kind enough to add us back. If you're a free user, you can use their instruments probably just for a short period and then they'll lock it again, trying to get you to buy a subscription. I like to use their free option just because I don't really use seasonality uh, as a strategy so much, but more so as a broad market view. So for this week, we are looking at October 9th to the 13th. So it's going to be the 9th to Friday the 13th this week. That's our trading week. You can see we actually average a plus 0.61% return. So it's positive. And this is when the markets start to historically bottom out a little bit. And we start seeing that rally up into November. And this is where the markets start to finish out the year. And lots of times we'll see some positivity, but we are in different market conditions now. It's always a hit or miss with seasonality. Look at it on the broad trend view rather than on a day-to-day -day basis. If you keep in mind that October is bullish, you might be a little bit more inclined to buy the dips in October and maybe just be more careful on shorts. But that doesn't mean, you know, day trade off seasonality. It doesn't mean just make a decision based off seasonality. Just keep it in the back of your head because markets do generally follow it. And we saw that in September looking pretty bullish overall for seasonality. Definitely keep that in mind. We do average a positive return in this period. And this is 25 years worth of data. And for specific dates here, we'll look at the Almanac. So October 9th, Monday, it is Columbus Day. So the bond market is closed. You won't see any official bond pricing or anything with yields, but you will see instruments such as the TLT, maybe the bond futures as well, still pricing in something. They're going to try to price in what's going to happen on Tuesday when it reopens, when the actual bond market reopens. So you'll, you'll still see bond instruments trade and that could have an effect on the market just because we've been so sensitive to yields and bonds. But overall, the actual bond market is closed on Monday. And then Dow, we're at 47.6. S&P at 42.9, NASDAQ at 52.4. So lower probabilities for the chance of the market rising on this day. More like neutral. I wouldn't say it's bearish, but it's not very bullish either. NASDAQ with the highest at 52.4. And this is for the chance of the market rising. 
and it's based off of probably anywhere from 50 to 100 years worth of data and they pretty much just put probabilities into specific dates for the dow the s p and the nasdaq tuesday october the 10th dow lost 1874 points 18.2 percent on the week ending 10 10 2008 so that's during the financial crisis worst dow week in the history of wall street so that's just a little historical fact tuesday the probabilities are not so bad dow at 57.1 s p at 57.1 nasdaq at 57.1 as well so really not bad at all pretty neutral probabilities then wednesday another neutral day nothing specific dow s p and nasdaq all in the 50s with nasdaq at 57.1 thursday october 2011 second Dow month to gain 1,000 points. You can see probabilities are all over the place. Dow at 38.1, a little bit lower. S&P at 47.6, NASDAQ at 57.1. And once again, these are probabilities for the market rising. And Friday, historically bullish day, it was bullish, bullish enough for them to give it a bull icon. Dow at 61.9, S&P at 61.9, NASDAQ at 66.7. So pretty good for Friday the 13th. Maybe we won't get bad luck after all. And now we'll go ahead and get into our individual tickers. This week, I do have four on watch. There was a lot of good stuff after Friday's close. There was a lot of, a lot of bullish bars, lots of things getting over downtrend structures, and it's just looking pretty good to start off maybe a rally over the next few weeks, but we'll have to see. This first one here, we're looking at TSM. This is Taiwan Semiconductor. You can see we had a test one test two, test three, test four, test five downtrend here. So really nice downtrend, but now we're popping out of that. You can see it hit this 89.50 structure low, which comes from over here in August. We do need to get over that if we want to see more upsides. We want to see it getting over that, make a base off it, head up into supply in the upper 90s. And usually after a breakout like this, it's not just going to shoot up straight away every single time. Sometimes it will, but a lot of times you'll see a little pullback after you, after the initial break. It'll kind of try to back test. That way institutions and large money, they can re-enter and then they'll run it up after that. For confirmation though, if you wanna wait for it to get over 89.50s and close over that, that's a good confirmation for it to start going higher. It looks like there's a little peak right here at 92.93. Watch this level, if it gets over 89.50, that'll probably be your price target on the short term. So TSM, I'm looking at calls. If you want, set an alert at 89.50, just right click, hit add alert, you can call a breakout and that's your alert. So that way if it starts getting over 89.50, watch that level, it could shoot up right there. And this downtrend breakout looks pretty good. It looks similar to AMD. AMD just had a too big of a green day for me on Friday. It's up almost 5%. So I feel like this is giving a little bit more room to enter. It's only closed up 2.6%. Maybe a little bit better of an entry. It's not too overextended on the short-term timeframes. TSM looking at calls. So this is the FXI. This is the iShares China large cap ETF. You can see it had really strong support at 25.50. I really like that bounce off of that. Obviously a better entry would have been down here and then you could play up to the downtrend line but there's still another setup regardless that it already bounced off this. We wanna see it breaking out of the downtrend. That's why I right clicked the downtrend line and I added an alert. So I already named it. We can just call it breakout as well. Hit save. So that way, once it starts getting outside of this, we can start looking for upside on this. And when it comes to trading Chinese names, you're obviously more so banking on the gap ups because a lot of times it's going to move off of gap ups or downs just because it has a different trading hours than the US. So you'll see larger gaps in Asian markets and really anything China related. You'll see those big gap ups and downs. So I'm really liking this to the upside. Obviously, you just got to wait for it to break out first. Price targets, it looks like there's a little bit of resistance here at 2730s there's a little rejection right here at 2677 so watch those two overall if it can get up to 2845 at this wick high that would be pretty nice It'd probably take a little bit though I'm not expecting that to hit just instantly it'd probably take a couple weeks sometimes it takes less especially if it breaks out of that downtrend line you never know what to expect it could go up pretty quick so but first watch the 27 or the 2677 and the 2739 those are your two nearby resistance points and wait for the downtrend break because if this just rejects, it could go back down to 25s. So you just want to wait for that. So FXI is more of a patient play. You want to wait for it to break out, give you a signal, then you can enter maybe buy, you know, at least 30 days of expiration, take a swing trade, give it some time to move around, gap up, gap down, because you see how it moves. I mean, it's a little bit choppy lately, lots of back and forth, but if you can get that confirmed downtrend breakout, it'll be looking good for upside. So FXI looking at calls.
All right, next we're going into QCOM. So I actually had a pretty good alert on this one in September, towards the beginning of September. I believe we bought this area right here. I think we bought this big red candle and then it needed one more day to kind of consolidate, pull down. And then we had a big gap up almost 4%. And that's the day I took profit. It actually ran higher. So I could have made way more on that. But I'm looking at this again, just because it's been so tight and consolidating. It looks like it's finally trying to break out of this. So you got to test one, test two, test three, multiple tests over here. And now it's starting to poke out of that. So overall, I feel like it could get up to this little 115 area at supply. That's the max I could see. So you got about five points to the upside. It's a pretty good move if it can do that, but it looks pretty good. I mean, if it can stay outside of this downtrend line and not go back within it, if it starts going back within it, you could probably invalidate the thesis on the short term. But overall, as long as the structures are holding really at 107 and 105, the supports are still holding. So it could still go up, but I'm more so looking at this downtrend breakout. So I want to see follow through on that. If it starts going back within, like I said, I'll probably not really pay attention to it as much anymore and wait for it to get back outside of that again. So QCOM looking good for upside, looking for a move up to 115, probably over anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. I can't really put a timeline on the market, but I'm looking at calls on this, looking for upside. So QCOM, be patient, make sure it stays outside downtrend and we can look at calls. All right, and last but not least for our individual tickers, we're looking at KR, this is Kroger. It's at a really nice support, just waiting for my technicals to load here. So I'll actually zoom out to the one week because I wanted to show you this. Well, we'll go to the one month because you can see it a little bit better. This little 42.75 right here, is from 2015. It's actually been strong support all year. And even in 2022, in late 2022, it's been bouncing off that. So I'm looking at, you know, a short term bounce off of this area again, as long as we're holding over it, I feel good about it, you know, curling back up and trying to get back up to this little structure right here. That's probably going to be at like 50 or so. If we can get back up to this multi-top area, that'd be a nice little shoot up obviously that could take a little bit this is the one month time frame this is the one week so it could take time it's not just going to get up there in a week none of these you know went up to there in a week it took multiple weeks sometimes even you know multiple months and then obviously your risk off would just be under 42.75 you could probably even mark this peak low right here at 41.82 comes from right here keep it simple we'll go down to the one day you can see we actually dipped into the 2015 peak I just showed you on the one month time frame at 42.75. It actually bounced off of that on Friday. So it had a really nice run up off that, kind of sold off into the close. One thing you do want to see on KR here, you want to see it getting over 43.50s. And I'll show you why here. So 43.50s is actually a structure low point from right here. This is from June 23. It needs to get back over that. That's where it kind of rejected and then closed back under. So you want to see it getting over that and it can probably shoot up to this little area right here at you know 45 flat or so so we want to see it getting over that 4350 closing over that making a base off of that and as long as it reclaims back over that we could see a spring upward obviously a lot of these retail names like cost wmt walmart target they all got smashed on friday for some reason I'm not exactly sure what the news was maybe there's a big earnings on one of them and they didn't do so well so it just affected the whole sector but either way, they got smashed and then kind of bought back up. A lot of people bought the dip and there's a big rally at the bottom because the whole market rallied on Friday. So it was just, just a huge broad market rally on Friday. Despite these retail names dumping, the market still went back up and a lot of the value names did recover a little bit off the bottom. So I really like this wick. That's a good sign that there's buying pressure. But like I said, needs to get over the 4350s, reclaim over that, and then it can shoot back up. There's obviously a lot of moving average resistance as well you can see the green and the yellow is the 9 and 21 it's been rejecting off that pretty good so if it did start shooting back up you'd want to look for resistance at that area as well and you definitely want to see it start getting back over that it needs to start closing over the 9 and 21 maybe you even see the 9 crossing back over the 21 if you want to see it get back up to the 200 ema which is the major resistance point so kind of keep in mind that this is still downtrending but you're looking at major support and then once it rebalances and comes back up into the moving averages, lots of times you want to expect resistance. And I explained that in the last options trading ideas video that I dropped last week. So maybe go back and watch that. And I showed 
just examples on the lower time frames as well. It does the same thing. If you're buying lower while it's trending under the 9 to 21 and it bounces back up, when it comes back up, it'll try to act as resistance there make a lower high and then you know get tagged back down again so you want to watch those moving averages on whatever time frame you're doing so kr here looking at calls needed over 4350s and it could be looking good for a move up into the moving averages or at least 45 flat all right and on to the indexes my favorite part so last week on the spx we've been looking for a reclaim over the four three three five lows the structure lows i mentioned it really needs to get over that for any meaningful upside or reversal. Really anything below that is just potential resistance. And we showed why last week, look at this rejection off 4335. This candle brought us down last week all the way into the 4200s. And it even broke our trend line. So you got a test one, test two, test three, almost test four trend line right here. Broke under it multiple times, but it actually faked out because Friday we reclaimed back over that. And you can see we closed up here. So we're back in line with the trend line. Now at a drop base drop supply zone, you can see this base candle right here. This is our drop base drop supply. You can even mark it. So this just pretty much aligns with 4335 and the high of this supply zone is pretty much the same area. So we need to see SPX or the SPY getting over that, making a base, filling up the sale imbalance. There's a gap right here as well. This is what we've been eyeing the past couple of weeks. Need to see it getting up there as well. Hopefully fill that. That'd be great for bulls. So the 4335, just keep it in focus. Definitely maybe even add an alert if you want there. Once it starts getting over that and closing over that, there's a lot of sell imbalance to fill. At least like almost 100 points worth of sell imbalance that we could fill up over 4335. So that'd be a huge move if we start entering this area right here. And we need to get over the structure lows to do that. So that's for the bulls. Right now, though, we are not over that. So you do have to keep in mind of this supply, which can act as resistance just on the short term. Obviously, if they're a big bullish candle like this. I wouldn't expect it just to fill back down the whole thing. I mean, obviously we've seen that a couple of times, such as like a bar like this, literally filled up the whole thing plus more to the downside. We've seen it, you know, a couple of times where we rallied really hard to the upside and then just gave it all back. So just don't expect it in one day. You know, it's pretty rare. You know, usually markets like to make kind of like a base and stall out before trying to go lower. So just look for short term resistance in this area just for the time being and then obviously if that ends up not playing out and there's no resistance and we start getting over the 4335 you can switch your bias but right now we are inside supply we're right at supply so you do want to be mindful of that and maybe just wait for the 4335 get taken out to the upside for rejection signals you're definitely going to want to wait for some type of one day candle close showing some type of red bar reacting to supply and that could have continuation the next day that's your best bet. Or you could just, you know, take the gamble, you know, when it's inside supply, take some puts for a day trade, maybe scalp it down and you can make some money. But if you are a patient trader and you'd rather wait for confirmation right now, the best thing, the trend is intact. I showed you that. So you got our uptrend line is back in order. So if we follow this uptrend, the 4335 and the move over that is definitely going to be the trade. So we want to see that. I definitely want to trade that. So I'm hoping we can eventually get over that. And I wouldn't blame you if you don't want to touch this area for shorts, just because of the uptrend line still holding. Most importantly, wait for 4335 to get taken out. That'd be a great trade. Then we can fill that gap, this whole sell imbalance, and everything will be looking pretty good. The only thing I didn't like about this rally here on Friday is that bonds did not participate. The TLT actually gapped down pretty heavily, but then it filled almost all the way, but we still closed down negative 1.2% on the TLT. So the yields closed very high and the bonds closed lower. Despite this equity rally, the bonds were not agreeing with the data that came out on Friday, which is understandable because it was a hot print. We added a lot of jobs. It's not good for inflation. So be careful of that. Careful of the bond market and also be careful of this supply. If you really want to wait, wait for it to get over 4335, like I said, that'd be a good trade. That'd be a good structure low reclaim and we'd be looking pretty gravy. Right now, a good thing, we did start closing over the nine EMA on the one day time frame. This is the green. So this is your five, which is the orange. This is your nine. It's the green. Yellow is the 21. So if it does go a little bit higher, the 21 EMA meets right with the 4335. So we'll need to get over the 21 EMA and the 4335. That's going to be up here.
So if you want to wait for that, wait for that. Otherwise, you know, just be cautious at this area. You got supply and the 21, not too far up ahead. So just be careful, maybe keep a bull bias for the seasonality, but at the same time, you know, just be patient, wait for the 4335 to get taken out. All right, next we're going into the QQQ. So this one was my favorite actually. And the reason for that was because we didn't break the structure lows yet. You can see this is our close on Friday, last Friday. So this is when we made the video. I mentioned 354.71 was your structure low and you could look for dip buys at that area. I'm sorry, this was actually Friday's close right here. So this was our most recent Friday close. It's basically at the same spot from two Fridays ago. So I got them a little mixed up. They almost look the same. It's basically the same close. I mentioned that we could see a little dip maybe into 354.70s. And the reason for that is because we were looking at the nine and 21 cloud last week. And you can see we actually found resistance at the 9 and 21 area right here and it pulled down on tuesday into 354.71 and this is the area i mentioned you want to be looking for dip buys on and it just worked amazingly i mean you could have traded this three days in a row 354.70s worked out so good so here was tuesday nice little bounce off of that once we reclaimed over it on wednesday nice rally came back down into the same area right here just at the 355 so close enough for me honestly to be looking for some type of bounce and then another one on friday which is crazy this is the craziest one and this squeezed a lot of shorts but this structure low area was just perfect to trade off of and that's why we kept it in focus and as well mentioned that the qqq looked the best out of everybody because this was friday's close this is the structure lows. We didn't close under structure lows at all. We were still over it. Unlike SPX, which I showed you last week, was closed under the structure lows. It's still under the structure lows now at 4335. We're not over that 4335 yet. So SPX is still under structure lows. QQQ was not. So QQQ had great strength. And this 354.71 was money. And it worked on Tuesday really well. And then we have multiple bounces from the general area three days after that. We dipped into the same spot and bounced from the same spot, basically. So worked really good. Uh, this week, a little bit different. We have a huge bullish close from Friday. So we have to keep that in mind. We do have a little resistance at 362.95. You can probably just round that up to 363. That comes from right here. We broke over that. So that's pretty much your level of focus right now. We need to see that 363 holding as a back test area. And if it doesn't back test, we just want to see it staying over it. Regardless, if it back tests or if it just shoots straight up here, we want it staying over 363. This little breakout point right here, it falls back under 363. It's probably just going to come back down to structure lows at 354.71. So your range is pretty much 362.95 down to 354.71. Those are your two major points right there. Right now, if we can stay over the 363 or the 362.95, whatever you want to call it, I would imagine we can get up to supply right here. This is a drop base drop zone. So this is a very nice drop base drop zone. You can see drop base drop. This is a big sale imbalance. This is a nice consolidation. So something happened in this area to lead to this big sale imbalance. And I feel like for QQQ, this is probably going to fill back up to the upside. That's usually what happens. And then once we get up to supply, you can look for resistance in that area. So I would just look for resistance here. But QQQ, as long as we stay over that 363, which is our resistance point right here. Sorry, the magnets kind of screwed that up. But these little areas right here, that's our resistance. We need to stay over that. That's also a breakout point and a back test area. So if it does pull into the 363 as well, look for dip buys on that area. And it'll probably try to shoot back up. Another good thing about QQQ it actually closed over the one day 21 EMA. Unlike SPX, which is still below the 21 EMA, QQQ actually closed over it. So you can see this is the yellow 21 EMA. We closed over that. So likely, I wouldn't imagine it's just going to shoot straight up. Usually after a break over the 21, you see a similar pattern with really anything. If it breaks over a resistance point, it'll pull back into it, hold that 21 EMA as a base or hold that resistance as a base, make support off of it, and then it'll go higher. Sometimes you can see it go straight up too as well, but most importantly, just watch 363 and the one day 21 EMA on your one day charts. Make sure that's holding, make sure we're closing over it, and then we can head up into supply right here. And like I said, if it fails and starts going back under you know, 363, or the 362.95 starts going back under that, you know, you can look for some downside there. But right now, QQQ looking pretty bullish. This close on Friday was just insane. This whole trading day was insane.
I think I got a lot of good day trades on SPY and QQQ on Friday. I think we went like four for five. All right, next we're going into IWM. This is our last equity ETF that we go over. So last week we were focused on this demand. I had it drawn right here. I actually got rid of it because we started closing under it. So this little area was our demand. I mentioned that you could keep looking for dip buys at this area until it broke under. Obviously it didn't work after Monday. Monday we started closing inside of it. Tuesday we actually closed under it. And once we closed under it, that's when we headed down into the 168s or the 169, which is this peak low that we've been looking at. I think we looked at it a couple weeks ago. I think I mentioned this is pretty much the max structure lows. If it did want to play out this head and shoulders, this is probably the max price target I could see over time. I didn't think it would get down there, you know, within you know, a couple of weeks though, I thought it would maybe take a little bit longer, but it didn't. So it finally hit that. We actually bought calls off of this 169 area. I think it was on, I think it was on Wednesday and we sold the next day for 17%. Could have made way more because Friday, this thing just blasted off. But either way, we played that structure low is pretty good. I wish I would have made a little bit more, maybe held some runners, made a little bit more than 17%. But either way, it was a nice little trade off the structure lows. And I really had no drawdown on this trade at all. I think as soon as I entered towards the close, IWM actually ran up and then we pretty much just stayed solid the next day and I was able to sell for a profit, but it kept projecting at this area and I didn't like that. I could even show you real quick. So it kept making resistance at this area right here. And I really didn't like this. And I think we sold uh, right here on Thursday, just right at this general area. Cause you got one rejection, two rejections, three, and then the next day is when we broke over it. I think I was looking for a re-entry over 172 and I missed it. You can see it happened actually in two 15 minute candles. So it'd be really quick for the 172 break. Obviously on the higher time frames, this still looks good for upside. If you can be patient and wait for the retrace, there's a lot of room to retrace on this. And there's really no supply on this until, so this is a drop base drop supply. You could probably even call it a rally base drop. There's only a short rally right here though, but this drop was really big. So if it does indeed get up to this area, I would definitely look for resistance there. If we added the moving averages, we're probably still trending under all of them. Yeah, you can see the five, the nine, and then 21 here. We're still under the nine. So it's been acting as pretty strong resistance. You got rejections right here. You got a rejection right here. And we have no idea what it's going to do here. Probably needs to get over 175 or 174.50 or so uh, in order to stop, you know, rejecting off of this EMA. So we need to see that for the IWM. But otherwise, this is right at structure lows. Looks pretty good for a dip buy. I definitely still like it. If you buy November expiration, give it lots of time to deal with drawdown risk. Maybe it'll chop around a little bit more before trying to bounce but that'll just give you a lot of time to deal with anything. Obviously, I don't like any shorts unless it gets back up into supply. You can look for resistance at that area. It's gonna be at about 176, or if it starts breaking under structure lows at 167.46, I could look for a short under that as well, or look for you know velocity selling to pick up. But right now, you can see general, general areas holding pretty good, pretty good reaction off of the structure lows. And I like that for a long. So that's for IWM looking good for a bounce still. Maximum I can see 176 at supply. And then obviously I wouldn't feel bearish until it got up to that or it starts breaking under 167.46. So just keep it simple. Structure lows, supply, focus on those. All right, next we're going into the VIX. So last week we actually called this pretty good because we were focused on this Friday close. I mentioned because it closed back over 17 with this bar right here, this is the close at 1750. I didn't feel good about it going lower. I actually expected it to get up to 1880s and it did that plus more. So it did the 1880s move within two days. It did it on Tuesday plus more and then actually ran up into the forbidden 20s. So I mentioned probably in previous videos this 2081 and this 2133 was your max peaks probably in the 20s and we probably needed to start closing over those in order you know for fear to really pick up it wasn't able to do that so it actually cleared the 1880s so vix went higher than i thought i thought it would top out at about 1880s or just the general area it went higher than that but either way it's pretty cool to see how it literally rejected right at the peak of 2081 which is this peak right here from may 23 
And then once it starts closing back under 1880s, that pretty much just takes you straight down to 17. And you can see you got a close here on Wednesday under 1880s and a close here on Thursday under 1880s. Went briefly back over it on Friday, probably due to the data, but then we had VIX crush Friday, got back under 1880s and went straight down to 17s, which is this peak right here. And this is also just a general support area. And the 17 area, is the reason why I expected it to go higher just because of the close right here, specifically at 1750 on Friday. So we do need to see it getting under 17s this week for more upside. I do like the follow through here. This is obviously a really good close for the bulls. If you're bullish on the stocks, you want to see big candles like this, big VIX crushes like this in order to, you know, see the market go higher. We need volatility to come down a little bit maybe stabilize a little bit because it's been a little bit whipsaw as you can tell. So the close under 17 is the next one we're looking for. You can see it tried to do that last week, like I said, on Friday, but then it came all the way back up here and closed here. So we need to see a red bar closing under 17s. Keep it simple. If it can do that, we can expect it to go back down to 1550s. 1550s comes from this structure low right here. It acted as resistance right here, acted as resistance right here. So you got three different points of 1550s, even got general area support of 1550s right here as well. So the 1550s, big level. If we can get under 17s and close under that, we could just see a skip straight down to 1550s. And that would just be a straight volatility crush. We would have our bullish October. Not sure how long it would last. You kind of just got to take it one day at a time, one close at a time and adjust on a daily basis because this market's insane. So neither close under 17. Obviously, if 17 starts holding as support and we start closing over it with some type of bullish candle, similar to what we saw Friday like this, and we start seeing it curling back up, it's just going to go back to 1880s, in my opinion, and fill up this little, you know, fill up these red candles, which it does easily. So red candles eventually do get filled back up if they are, you know, straight down enough. You'll see that imbalance get filled right back up and you see it on stocks as well too so just pay attention to that when the vic starts doing more stuff like this it's a little bit harder a little bit tougher this is when volatility contracts market feels a little bit slow goes into consolidation sometimes we even see melt ups when it just keeps doing this because it's not moving enough so this is good for trading this is more good for swing trading. And if you want to see volatility contract, you want to see a little bit more stability in the market. If you want to see a bullish market right now, we need that close under 17. Keep it simple. If it starts closing under 17, we can go down to 1550s. If it starts holding a support, like I said, at 17s, it's probably just going to go straight back up to 1880s. So want to see that close under that for the bullish bias. 1708, 17 flat, need to close under that. All right. And last but not least, going into the DXY or the US dollar. So last week, we actually added this 107.19 level and this 107.99. And I think we added this 109.50s as well. We did react to one of them. I wasn't expecting it to get up to 107.20 or I wasn't expecting it to break over these at least, which luckily it didn't because if we started breaking over 107.20s or the 108, it would have been bad. Uh, we actually rejected that pretty hard on Tuesday. So the dollar was already selling and looking pretty good for a rally. Once the dollar starts cooling down, people start to chill out a little bit and you can see the markets go up. We actually didn't really get a huge rally or anything until Friday. And the, the DXY only closed down, you know, 0.22%. Very crazy day on Friday. Yields were still skyrocketed. Dollar was down just a little bit, but you would think after a big green day like that with equities, you would see the dollar down way more and you'd see yields down as well, but we didn't see that. So you could say that, you know, starting after this rejection, that's kind of giving a little hint that we would rally because the dollar's finally cooling down, but we really didn't see that huge impulsive move until Friday. So. This week for the DXY, we're actually back down to 105.80s and we're actually directly at the trend line now. So we need to see this breaking. I've probably mentioned this a bunch of times. We need to close under this area, which is a back test level right here as well. And that's also going to meet with the trend line. So we need to close under 105.80s. If we close under 105.80s, that's going to confirm the trend line break. That's going to confirm the structure break. And we are back within big resistance if we start closing under 105.88 over here that I'm circling with my mouse. So if we start getting back under that area, it's probably just going to shoot back down to 104.70s, which is this peak right here. And it's also a back test area from right over here. So keep it simple. Need the trend line break, need the 105.88 break in order to go lower. And that probably give the market an excuse to rally. 
But for right now, you can see Sunday, the DXY is trading. It's actually up a little bit, likely due to the overseas conflict with Israel and Palestine. I'll have to take a look at the futures. I haven't even looked at them. I think I started recording this before they open, so I'll have to take a look. But right now, still holding structure, still holding trend line. So you kind of have to assume until it breaks, this could just act as support, could act as a trend, and it'll just keep marching higher, probably head back up into the 107s. So we need to see that break under for the bulls. If you want to see stocks go up, you want to see the market stabilize a little bit, you want to see everything a little bit more chill, we need the dollar under 105.88 and under the down or the uptrend line. So keep it simple. Otherwise, this could just, you know, keep going higher. So if you want to wait for that signal, wait for the VIX to get under 17 and close under it. And also wait for the DXY to get in our 105.80s. That's a perfect recipe for the market to rally even harder. Another thing, like I said, we need to see SPX over 4.335. If it gets over 4.335 and closes over it, maybe multiple days in a row, maybe we get one big close over it. That's a great sign. We'd probably see a broad market rally as well. So hopefully we can see more than just tech, you know, getting over its structure lows, which we saw hold very strongly. QQQ never broke under its structure lows intensely or anything like that. Just dipped under it just a little bit and then we rallied right off of it. And that was at that 354 70s level that we've been focused on the past couple of weeks and last week as well. So that's the video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trees YouTube channel. I'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys and I'm out.